Welcome to Digits, I'm Simon Constable. Finally, there might be some good news for embattled BlackBerry. Shares were up today after CEO Thorsten Heinz laid out plans for a transformation. Joining us with the details now is Market Watch's Dan Gallagher. He joins us from San Francisco. D Dan, um, good news has been in short supply over at BlackBerry, and we saw the little peak up there. What did he say? Well, you know, it's funny because he didn't say anything terribly different than what he said before. Um, you know, he laid out that the company is still sort of in the midst of their transformation that they're trying to do and that they're actually pretty early in the process. He described this as a three-stage transformation and that they're just now starting what he called phase two, uh, which is going to involve a lot of investment in, into services and things like BlackBerry Messenger, um, you know, with the hope of getting more traction for it. Um, this is very similar to what he said on the earnings call a couple weeks ago, um, but, I, you know, he was still pretty uh, solid and bullish, and I think, you know, at the shareholders meeting anyway, the reception seemed to be pretty good for it. Now, w one of the things that, that has happened with BlackBerry is that it's continued to disappoint investors and the rollout of its new smartphone has not done as well as some people wanted. How long is Wall Street going to give him? Because Wall Street can be patient if they think there's a compelling story. But if, if he doesn't deliver, at some point they're going to pull the plug. Uh, you know, that's a, I think that's going to be the question that hangs over this stock because um, you know, the case he made today is that the company needs needs a bit needs time uh, to do what it wants to do. Um, it's really uncertain how long Wall Street is actually going to give him in that time. Um, he he really kind of blamed that uh, expectations got out of whack in the recent quarter, which has pushed down the shares. Um, you know, especially in terms of like uh, shipments for BB10. Um, but there's still a lot of, even if uh, there's still a lot of legitimate questions about how well BB10 devices are actually selling, regardless of how many devices they ship to the carriers, how many end consumers are buying them. The U.S. market's particularly tough for them, and he was pretty upfront about that at the meeting. Um, but I think I think what we're going to see play out for BlackBerry is you know, over if, if there's not better results next quarter, maybe the one after that, um, I think there's going to be a lot of investors getting a lot more impatient. Um, I'm not sure if they'll give the company the kind of time the company wants to be able to get from them, uh, but we'll have to see. Well, well, it's sort of blaming the expectations is one of the things you said, but also in, in your story, Dan, which is a great story, you, you say he sort of blames the carriers too. And there's this great quote about the carriers. It's hard not to convince them, to, to convince them to, not to go where the puck is, but where the puck is going. And that's obviously a, a, an ice hockey um, metaphor there. But he's sort of blaming them. Isn't it his job to communicate why going where the puck is is more important, that where it's going to be rather than where it is is more important? You know, he was very careful about that because obviously BlackBerry needs the support of carriers to move its products. Um, so he took a lot of pains to say that we have a great relationship with them. I think he was trying to spell out there was an interesting question from the from one of the shareholders that said that about the U.S. market that was kind of a conspiracy type theory of, you know, are, are U.S. carriers just against Canadian companies selling devices? Um, what, I, what I think he was trying to address was that you know for carriers they're going to focus on the devices that move so when you have a company like blackberry that now is arguably maybe a niche device um, it's not going to get the same level of support that an iPhone and a Galaxy are going to get from the carriers. And, you know, his attempts to sell BlackBerry as this mobile computing platform of the future um, is going to be hard for carriers that actually have to meet their own quarterly numbers. Um, yeah. So I think he was trying to hit that distinction without necessarily blaming them. But, uh, you know, it was, it was interesting that he brought up the point like that. Okay. Now, now, Dan, I, you know, we've got to go back a few years. It's not that long ago that there were no iPhones at all anywhere. They managed to bring out a, a phone, get a carrier signed up and get it out there. And, and it did rather well, I think. Uh, it did. And, you know, ultimately, phones that sell well are going to get support from carriers. It's, uh, it becomes one of those um, types of chicken and egg questions. Are the carriers going to throw support behind something that doesn't have the traction to give it traction? Um, you know, or if without the support, will it ever get that kind of traction? Um, I think BlackBerry is still in kind of a phase where it needs to prove that it has, um, you know, enough of a business and can get enough customers into stores for the carriers to increase the promotion they give it. Um, I'm not sure they've done that yet. They might be able to, uh, but I think that's, that's one key question hanging over them right now. Okay, well, we shall see, and uh, we'll be no doubt 
dropping in with you again to find out what's been going on. Dan Gallagher of MarketWatch, thanks for your time. Uh, right. I'm Simon Constable, and that was Digits.